here are two um, different parabolas. The first parabola, the red parabola, is um, y equals x squared, <coughs> and it is standard form of the parabola. Or, or I'm, it's just a parent, parent function, I don't know what I'm saying. It is the parent function, x squared, and we have, we know that we can put a number in front of it and it does stuff to the parent function. We also know that we can move the function around depending on where we put numbers um, with the formula. So my blue function is what I have grown up calling standard form. If you had me for 131, you looked at this and it was standard form and algebra one and algebra two, this is called standard form, okay? The book that we use right now calls this standard form. And this is the vertex form. I will use, when I want you to do this, it, I will say standard form slash vertex form. On your homework, the, the professor that wrote the homework did an outstanding job, but he calls this standard form, okay? So if you have any confusion on what you're supposed to do, let me know. But on homework, this is what we're going for right here. But today, we're going to be kind of going back and forth with these so that you can, um, so that you know what, what I'm talking about. So let's look at the green, okay? The green. I've got y equals x plus 5 squared plus 16. And if you remember back from chapter 2, when I have a number that is inside the parentheses, that moves my graph right to left, and the value that it moves is opposite. So I have x plus 5, so I actually move to the left 5, or negative 5. Okay? The number outside affects my y value, and it moves up and down. And so my graph, my, my green graph has moved my parent function to the left 5, and up 16. Now, my blue function is y equals x squared plus 10x plus 41. Okay, and that's this form right here, which in the past you have probably called standard form. The reason that we can't see the blue function is because the green function is right on top of it. What that tells us is that I have this vertex form correct. So when your graphs show up on top of each other, that's a good thing, okay? And we're gonna use that today as we move through and we start learning how to use vertex form of our graph, okay? So as we talk about this specific form, um, we, and like I said, the f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We have called that standard form for a long time. This particular book calls our, what we might know as vertex form standard form. I promise I will be very, very clear on your tests and your quizzes what I want. So I want us to look at this vertex form. The h and the k in our vertex form, that's our vertex, okay? HK is the vertex of our parabola. So this is very helpful for us to be able to identify vertex form because then we can pull out the vertex immediately. Okay, my A value does two things. It tells me how much I stretch and shrink, and it tells me the direction that my parabola goes. Now, if my A is positive, my parabola opens up. If my A is negative, my parabola opens down. This, we probably remember. We probably remember that from dealing with parabolas for a long time. Okay? This is awkward for us. This is different. We're going to have to look at a couple of the um, examples before we've got it. The absolute value of A, if the absolute value of A is greater than one, okay? 
So negative three. Negative three has an absolute value that's greater than one. Positive three has an absolute value that's greater than one. Okay? It's going to make my graph more narrow. It's going to look steeper. It's going to look slimmer. Okay? If I have a fraction or I have something less than one, that my a value's absolute value is less than one, my parabola is going to be wider. Now let's get a visual of what that looks like. Can I move off the screen? I see a couple people writing, I'm gonna wait. negative four. Here's my vertex right here. Okay, now my green graph, my A value for my green graph is negative one. The negative means it's upside down. The one is kind of my standard. It's, 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 it's what's kind of assumed. It's what my parent graph, it's the width my parent graph would be. Okay, now my purple graph has a negative two in front of it. Okay, but I want you to see how it is more narrow than the graph where a equals negative one. Okay, so when my absolute value is greater than one, my graph is more narrow. Okay, my black graph, I have a fraction for that graph. My A value is negative one half. That graph is going out further. Now, the negative two and the negative one half are called stretching and shrinking factors. And their behavior is a little bit different than what we would expect. So that's why I want you to look at this graph. And this would be a reasonable thing to take a picture of or go back to the recording and be sure you have it. Okay? Can I go to the next one? We good? Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start out pretty simple. What I want us to do now is I just want us to take a given vertex and some given information and we are going to put it into this standard slash vertex form. That's what we're going to do, our standard slash vertex form. Okay? So that is um, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Uh, K doesn't look great. Let me rewrite that. Plus K. Is that better? So, what we're going to do, this is my H value, and it goes right there. This is my K value, and it goes right there. The opens down affects my A value. Okay? So, F of X. This opens down, but does it have a stretching or shrinking factor? Am I told it stretches or shrinks at all? No, so it stays one. So my A value is actually gonna be negative one because all it tells me is that it opens down. So my A value is gonna be negative one. What's my a, um, X minus H, what's H? Two. And what's K? Six. Okay, now you can leave it like that or you can just write the negative. You don't have to write the one. 
you do have to write the negative. If I don't have the negative there, what's going on? It's going up. Okay, so we've got to have the negative there. Okay, now my second one, my vertex is negative 2, 2. It opens up and it's shrunk by a factor of 1, 4. Okay, negative 2, 2, it opens up and it's shrunk by a factor of 1, 4. Because it opens up, is A positive or negative? Positive. Now I'm shrunk by a factor of 1 fourth. So what is my A? It's just positive 1 fourth. Okay? Then I've got X minus negative 2. Okay, be sure that you're aware there's a minus sign in the original formula. And then I have plus 2. I do need to rewrite this because I end up with 1 fourth x plus 2 squared plus 2. So you solve these, right? No, you're done. All you're doing is you're putting them in this form. You are correct. And there's going to be a lot of that in this chapter where we have to figure out what we have to do. Okay? Okay. I want you to do this one. My vertex is 0, 3, opens down, I'm stretched by a factor of 7. Okay, what is my A value? Okay, I heard somebody say seven. It is negative seven, okay? The reason it's negative seven is because it opens down. Okay, when it opens down, your A value is negative. Stretched by a factor of seven, that, that's my A, okay? Then I have X minus zero plus three, okay? I can simplify this a little bit. So I'm gonna have negative seven. What's x minus zero? X. Okay, I would actually accept either one of these as your answer, because um, the directions say to put it in vertex form or standard form. So if you left that zero in there, I would accept it. Okay. Okay. Now, what we are doing is we are now graphing from this. Now, this is in standard form or this vertex form right here. So, what I want to do now is I want to graph this. And I'm going to identify three things. Okay, from this right here, I need to identify the vertex, the direction, and the stretching shrinking factor. Okay, that's what I need to identify. So what for this one, um, what's my, ooh, that was not what I was expecting. What is my vertex? What's my vertex here? Okay, I heard some people say four. It's not four. Negative four. Okay, remember, the reason that it's negative four is our original formula is f of x equals a times x minus h, okay?
So that x value is going to be opposite. So it, this is negative 4. So my vertex is negative 4, negative 1. Okay? Your, your y value is true to value. Your x value is going to be opposite. Okay? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so here is my vertex. Okay, I, do I go up or down? Why do I go down? Okay, talk to me a little bit more about that. Where did you get your negative one from? Okay. It actually did not. Okay, look right here. Do I have anything right here? Do I have anything right there? No, so that's positive, so it's going to open up. You're thinking about this right here, x minus h. Okay, that's the formula for, for the x value of the vertex. So the x value, so here I've got x plus 4 squared. My x value is negative 4. Well, the formula is x minus h. Okay, so if I were to rewrite this, I would have f of x equals 1 x minus negative 4 plus, or actually minus 1. Okay, so this minus right here is part of the formula. So my value for x is negative 4. That's why it's negative 4. But my a here is 1, so that means it opens up. And there's no stretching or shrinking factor. I am not a great artist when it comes to parabolas. Okay? Uh, the direction is positive or negative. The direction is positive or negative. If the direction is positive, it goes up. If the direction is negative, it goes down. The stretching and shrinking factor is that A value. Okay? And the stretching or shrinking factor has an absolute value of greater than 1 or less than 1. If the absolute value is just 1, then it stays the same. It's just your standard parent function that you've moved. Okay, let's try another one. Okay? Remember, you're identifying three things. First thing you're identifying is the vertex. Second thing you're identifying is um, direction. Third thing you're identifying is your stretching and shrinking factor. Okay? That's what you're identifying. Okay, what's my vertex? Good. Negative 3, negative 2. Am I going up or down? Yeah. Good, because of that negative in front. What's my stretch and shrink? Yeah, it's, it's just 1. So it's going to stay whatever the parent function is. Okay? So I'm going to graph this. Okay, so my vertex is going to be at negative 3, negative 2. Okay, it's opening down and it's not being stretched or shrunk. Okay, are we ready to stretch and shrink? Okay, you've got one minute. I want you to try this one.
What's my vertex? Six, negative four. Excellent. Six, negative four. Six, negative four. So I go over six. And then I go down four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Good, okay. Am I going up or down? Up. Why up? Good. The one fourth is positive, so my graph is going to be opening up. The one fourth, that is my stretching and shrinking factor. The absolute value of one fourth is less than one. So am I more narrow or am I more wide? Wide. I'm more wide. So let's go back to that screen for just a second. Okay? Right here. Here is my stretching shrinking factor of one. Okay? When I've got an absolute value greater than one is when it gets more narrow. Less than one is when it gets more wide. Okay? So when I have fractions, it's getting more wide. Fractions make it more wide. So, is this it right here? We are going to be wider than the parent function. Okay? Going to go more wide. Okay? Okay. Students typically do okay um, on those first couple of slides. What we are going to do now is we are going to be given a formula that is in what we've been taught as standard formula for a long time. We're going to be given it in this ax squared plus bx plus c. And we've got to go from ax squared plus bx plus c to the vertex, or what we're calling the standard formula now. <coughs> so up here, what I've got on the board, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. What I want us to do now is I want us to solve that by completing the square. Okay? And this is just to help us remember how to do completing the square. I'm not being asked to solve this. What I'm being asked to do is get it to the vertex formula. But before we can really wrap our mind around how to do that, we have to remember how to solve using completing the square. So... When I solve this using completing the square, solve using completing the square. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 4x plus one equals zero. Okay, so I'm solving this using completing the square. What I have to do is I've got to take that plus one and I've got to put it on the other side. That's what I'm gonna do. How do I put the plus one on the other side? Subtract. So then I'm gonna have x squared plus four x equals negative one. All I've done is I've taken that one and I've put it on the other side. To complete the square, I take half of my B value. My B value is four. What is half of that? Two, and I square it. What's two squared? Four. So now I am gonna add that four to both sides, okay? So, now that I've done that, I've done the completing the square portion. Um, so I factor this. Is any of this ringing a bell? A little bit, maybe. Okay. At this point, I take the square root of both sides. Okay, and I'm left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. 
and I solve for x, okay? So I have solved this using completing the square. Now, what I want to do with this is not solve it. What I want to do is I want to get this into this formula, the vertex standard formula. And we do that by creating perfect square trinomials. This right here is a perfect square trinomial, right here. That's a perfect square trinomial. Now, what I want you to do now is I want you to FOIL for me x minus 3 squared, and I want you to FOIL for me x minus 1 squared. I want you to FOIL those. First, outer, inner, last. Okay? First, outer, inner, last. x minus 3 times x minus 3. Okay? You're foiling both of those. Okay? When I foil this, x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Three negative 3 times x is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So what I get here is x squared minus 6x plus 9. When I do this one, x squared minus 1x minus 1x plus 1. What I have here is these are called perfect square trinomials. And what you need to realize is that when I factor, when I factor a perfect square trinomial, what I get is a binomial squared. Okay, when I factor a perfect square trinomial, I get a binomial squared. And this right here in our formula is a binomial squared. That's what this is right here, is a binomial squared. So when we are solving using completing the square, we create a perfect square trinomial. When we solve, or when we when we redo this and we put this one into the vertex formula or the standard formula, we create a perfect square trinomial, okay? So now I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna work on our specific problem, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm leaving my f of x. So I have f of x right here so I'm not subtracting one from both sides because I've got to keep my f of x. So I have x squared plus 4x, and I'm just moving my 1 over some. I'm just moving my 1 over some. And I'm going to focus on this right here. I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial right here. So I'm going to take half of 4 and I'm going to square it. So what is half of 4? And what's 2 squared? 4. Okay, now, this is where I do something different. Over here, when I added the plus 4 to this side, what did I do to the other side? I added plus 4. Over here, I'm still on the same side. So what I have to do is I've got to zero that out. How do I zero out plus 4? I heard it. Negative 4. So I'm going to leave this so I can factor it. But because I added 4 for my perfect square trinomial, since I'm on the same side of my equation, I've got to do the opposite. Okay, when I am solving using completing the square, I add the same thing to the opposite side. When I am doing this, where I'm putting it into the vertex or standard formula, I've got to add the opposite. 
because I can't add it to the other side because I've got f of x. So because I have added 4 and then subtracted 4, have I kept everything even? Have I kept my formula balanced? Because I, yes, because I've essentially added 0. Okay? Now, can I factor that perfect square trinomial? x squared plus 4x plus 4. I mean, by design, I created it to be factored. So I get x plus 2 squared. What's 1 minus 4? Negative 3. So now I have it in vertex formula. So my vertex here is, what's my vertex? Good. Does it open up or does it up open down? Up. It opens up because I've got a positive. There's nothing, like right here is where I'm looking. Good. You're absolutely right. It opens up. Um, and you can write no stretch or shrinking, or you could put a factor of one, um, or a factor of one, either way. Good. You guys did well with that. Okay, and I know it takes a minute for us to wrap our mind around that. So let's try another one, okay? Yes, ma'am. Say that one more time. Over on the right hand side. Yeah. Um, I was doing that to show you that process of completing the square. So, so this part over here is just a review of how to do completing the square. So you don't need to worry about this. Whoops. It was just to remind your brain how to do completing the square. Yeah, because when we do it over here, we do it differently because we've got f of x on one side instead of zero. Okay? Can we try another one? Actually, this is the graph right here. I forgot that I had the graph in here. Okay, so the reason that I'm showing you this graph, okay, this right here was my original formula. That was the original formula that I was given. This is the formula that I got to after I did completing the square. Now, you cannot see both graphs. Why can you not see both graphs? They're on top of each other. And is that what we want? Yes. If they are both on top of each other, that means we did it correctly. So this is a way to use Desmos to check your work. Okay? Do not use Desmos too early in the process. You want to use Desmos to check to make sure you're doing it the right way. Okay? Okay. Now, here we have another one. f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. This one is different because I have a 2 in front of this. So we're going to have to do this differently. Okay? I am still going to separate the 7. So I've got f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. So I'm going to have that off to the side. Now, to get to this formula right here, I want to have a 1 in front of this x. I want to have a 1 in front of this x. Okay? Can I factor something out of those first two terms? 2. I can factor a 2 out. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So I have f of x equals 2 times x squared plus 4. Okay? Now, what's half of 4? Whoops, I forgot my x, didn't I? 
What's half of four? Two. What's two squared? Four. Now, what students want to do at this point is they want to subtract four from the seven. So we've added four, so they want to subtract four. But have we added four or have we added something more? Okay, not 16, but eight. We added eight because what is two times four? Okay, I think um, the 16 would be if you squared the four. We're not squaring the four, we're multiplying the four times two. Okay, so we have two times four. What's two times four? Eight. Okay, so we've got eight. So I'm adding eight. What do I need to put with the seven? Minus eight, excellent, excellent, okay? So now, we're good. Now we just need to, to simplify this and make it pretty. So I have f of x equals 2, x squared plus 4x plus 4. That's a perfect squared trinomial by design. It factors to x plus 2. It always factors to what half of b is. That, that's how we want it to, to work. Then, what do I have left? What's seven minus eight? Minus one, excellent, excellent. So my vertex, negative two, negative one. Okay, it opens up or down? Up, and is it wider or more narrow? Good, okay, and how do we check? Desmos, we put this into Desmos, and we put this into Desmos. And when we do that, we want to see only one graph. That's what we want to see. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm subtracted eight. Okay, good question. The question is, why did I subtract eight? So do you think we should add eight or you think we should subtract four? Or you're not sure either way? Okay, that's fine. Can I move off this screen? Okay, I'm gonna go back to this screen. When I am solving to complete the square, okay, I am dealing with two sides of an equation, okay? So I have set it up to where it equals zero, and I add four to both sides. And the reason that that keeps it equal is because I have done exactly the same thing to both sides. That's why that makes this equal. And this is what we learned first, probably in Algebra 1. It was probably reviewed in Algebra 2. And then you probably hit it again if you check out number 1. Okay? Now, we aren't solving to complete the square. So what I'm doing is I no longer have two sides of the equation that I can deal with. I've only got one side of the equation that I can deal with. Okay? So when I add four to create a perfect square trinomial, in order to keep that even, I've got to equalize it to zero. And the way I undo positive four is I subtract four because I am on the same side of the equation. Okay, that's why it's opposite. In this particular one, I added four and I subtracted four because I'm not dealing with the other side. If I was dealing with the other side, I would just add four to this side. But I'm only dealing with one side. That's why it's opposite. Now, for this one, here, to complete my perfect square trinomial, I had to add four to it. Okay? But that four is inside parentheses that's got a two on the outside. Okay, and if I were to distribute this, what would that four become? What's two times four? Eight. So that's why this is a negative eight. Because what I've added here is positive eight. So what I have to add out here is the opposite. And it'll, it takes a little bit of time, but it'll click. Okay, 
Then when we graph it, does it look the same? Okay. Now, I'm going to give you two minutes to wrestle with this one. Two minutes. Okay? You are finding the vertex and you are finding the x-intercepts. You're doing both. Okay, first thing, and something that I do sometimes, is I sometimes go ahead and graph this just so I know what I'm looking at, okay? And if I were to graph this, what is something that you would notice about this graph? Which way does it open? Down. Down. Why does it open down? Good, okay? So what we're actually going to need to factor out of those first two terms are a negative. That's what we're going to need to factor out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have my f of x. And I'm going to have my negative x squared plus 6x. And then I'm going to have my minus 8. Okay? So I'm going to deal with this area first. I'm going to deal with this area first. I need to get rid of that negative. I need to pull that negative and put it on the outside of the parentheses. So I've got to factor the negative out of the x squared and the 6x. So I'm going to have f of x equals negative 1 x squared plus 6, or not plus, I'm factoring out a negative, so what is it? Minus 6x, okay? I don't know what I'm adding to that yet. And then I've got minus 8. Now, I want to create a perfect square trinomial by putting something right here. What is half of negative 6? I heard a 3, but half of, that, half of it's not 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, half of negative 6 is negative 3. What's negative 3 plus 9? Okay, so I'm going to add 9. Okay. I'm adding 9. Now, if I look just at this trinomial, x squared minus 6x plus 9, what am I multiplying that trinomial by? Negative, yes. Okay? This negative 1 is what I'm multiplying this by. Okay? So this 9 once I multiply it by negative 1, it becomes negative. So based on this right here, based on this, what have I added to this problem? I have not. I have added a negative 9. Okay, so 
I think you're just a step ahead of me because that's the answer to the next question. Okay? You're just, you're just one step ahead of me. You're fine. Okay. So because of this 9 and this negative 1, what I have added, my green's not as dark as I want it to be. Okay? I have actually added negative 9 to this problem. How do I undo negative 9? Add 9. So that is what I'm adding out here. Okay? So I've got to do the opposite. And the reason that this 9 becomes negative 9 is because that negative 1. And I know it just takes some practice. And you're going to get practice on this, I promise. You're going to get lots and lots of practice on this. Okay, now I've got everything that I need. So I have f of x. My negative stays on the outside. Now you can leave it negative 1 or you can just put negative. It doesn't matter. This factors to x minus 3 squared. And then I've got plus 1. Okay. So my vertex here, what's my vertex? It's not negative three. three and one. It's three and one, okay? Just remember your X is opposite. So my vertex um, is three, positive one. It opens down. Does it have a stretching or shrinking factor? No, okay? Okay, now. It also wants intercepts, and you might be like, oh good, I'm glad, I can do intercepts, okay? But I've also got to find my intercepts. So I'm going back to my original problem, f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. To find my intercepts, what do I set this equal to? Zero. Okay, so I've got 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. I'm going to factor out a negative because when I factor out a negative, it makes this so much easier to solve. Okay, do you know how to factor this right here? Yes. What two numbers multiply together and give me positive 8? <laughs> and added together give me negative six. What two numbers multiplied together give me positive eight and added together give me negative six? Negative two and negative four. Okay, now I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero. Okay, now I don't have to set this to zero because I know that negative one doesn't equal zero. Eventually, you're gonna have an X there, okay? And not too long, you're gonna have an X there. And so you're gonna wanna put that X equal to zero. So it's a good habit to get into, to put that equal to zero, okay? My next one, what's my X value here? Two, what's my X value here? Four. Okay, so let's put all this together. Okay, this is my original problem right here. That's my original. This is in standard or vertex form. Okay, that was what I was working toward. I identified my vertex as 3, 1. And here it is right here. 3, 1. I identified my intercepts, my x-intercepts, as 2 and 4. Okay? So did I do it correctly? Yes. Okay? And I know this is a lot of information. This unit is, is definitely the more challenging unit. Okay? Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, can I go to the next screen? Okay. So, what we have here
here is we have a vertex and we have a point. We have a vertex and we have a point. Think about a line. Okay, y equals what is this big? Y equals one half x plus three. How many points are on that line? What? How many points are on the line? Infinity. Infinity. You have infinitely many points on a line. How many points do I have on a parabola? Infinite. Infinitely. Okay? So you're going to go on and on forever. So, what I have is the vertex, and then I have one point. I have the vertex, and I have one point. So I can go ahead and put my vertex into my formula that includes the vertex. So that formula is f of x equals a um, times x minus h squared plus k. Negative 2 and 5 is my h and my k. So I have f of x equals a times x plus 2. Why is it plus 2? Because it's negative, okay? So it's actually minus negative 2. What's minus a negative? Plus a positive, okay? Now, is f of x and y the same thing? Yes. Okay, now, um, zero, nine is a point on the line. Uh, my son is, A point on the line is 0, 9. 0 is my x value. 9 is my y value. Can I... Okay, so I can plug 0 in for x and 9 in for y. So what I'm trying to find is that a now can i solve from there okay so i have nine equals a times two squared plus five so i can rewrite this what's two squared so i have four a plus five what do i do now Okay, so I have 4 equals 4a. What's a? a is 1. Okay, so I rewrite this as f of x equals 1. Do I have to write the 1? I don't. Plus 5. Okay, now I want to graph that. I want to graph it. When I graph it, I look and I am told that 1, negative 2, oh, where am I? I'm not at the right place. Yes, 1, oh, here I am. My vertex is negative 2, 5. Okay, so negative 2, 5, there's my vertex. And I'm also told that 0, 9 is on the line. So this is negative 2, 5, which is what I was told. And I was also told that 0, 9 is on the line. 
So did it work? It did. Okay. Okay, I want to remind you how to do two other things. I want to remind you how to use the quadratic formula and how to do completing the square. Quadratic formula and completing the square. Okay, quadratic formula and completing the square. If you look at this right here, I've got x squared plus 10x minus 2. Here it is. ax squared plus bx plus c. In this problem up here, what is my a value based on this formula right here? What's my a value? 1. And what's my b value up here? 10. When I've got an a value of 1 and a b value that's even, the process of completing the square is the better way to go. It's more straightforward completing the square. Now you can use the quadratic formula if you want to. You can use either one. But when A is 1 and B is even, completing the square works very nicely. Okay, so let's talk about the steps for completing the square. This cannot be factored. This cannot be factored. There are no numbers that multiply together that give us negative 2 and added together give us 10. So I have to be able to use the quadratic formula or completing the square. Okay, so the first thing that I do, the first thing that I do is, so I'm going to erase this just so I have more room. Um, I'm going to move the constant, move the constant to the opposite side. Okay. Okay. Move constant to the opposite side. Okay? So I'm going to do that by adding 2 to both sides. So I have x squared plus 10x equals positive 2. Okay? Now, my next step in completing the square is to take half of my B value and square it. What's half my B value? What is it? What's half of 10? Five. five. What is um, five squared? 25. Okay? So what I did there is I added that to both sides. Okay? I added that to both sides. I have created a perfect square trinomial. By design, I have created a perfect square trinomial. So my next step, my next step then is to factor that perfect square trinomial. Okay? I'm factoring x squared plus 10x plus 25. That factors to x plus 5 squared. My next step, is to take the square root of both sides. Okay, I'm taking the square root of both sides. So I have a square root and I have a square root. So I have x plus five equals plus or minus the square root of 27. Now remember, 
if I have x squared equals 4, we immediately see that x can be 2. We forget what else can x be. What else squared gives me positive 4? Negative 2. So we can't forget that negative. Don't forget that negative. Okay, so I've got to have plus or minus the square root of 27. Then what happens is I solve for x. So my last step is solve for x, but I also have to simplify. Okay, I have to simplify, and sometimes we forget how to do that. Now, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I'm left with negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 27. Many of us will want to leave it as negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 27. But 27 breaks down into a perfect square factor. 9 times 3 is 27. Can I take the square root of 9? What's the square root of 9? 3. So I have x equals negative 5 plus or minus 3 on the square root of 3. This is my final answer right here. Okay? That's my final answer. So this is a reminder on how to solve quadratics when you can't factor. This is how you solve quadratics when you can't factor. The other option is to use the quadratic formula, okay? Now, for this one, my A value is 1. My A value is 1. My B value is not even. Negative 3 is an odd number, okay? So for this one, I would use the quadratic formula. What's my A value in x squared minus 3x plus 1? Good. So A, oops, A is 1. What's B? Negative 3. And what's C? Okay. So I've got negative B. Okay, my B value is negative 3 plus or minus the square root, negative 3 squared. You are squaring the negative and you are squaring the 3. Minus 4 times A times C. And all of that is over 2A. Okay? Negative, negative 3 is positive 3. What's negative 3 squared? Good. Positive 9 minus 4. Three plus or minus the square root of five over two. Okay? So on 